Hello, Tim here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, I'm talking about charger plates, and you said, "What? What is a charger plate?" And uh, that's the traditional term of a of an oversized plate that is used on the table place setting. This is a charger plate out of wood. I actually spalted maple and when you have a, a fine dining situation you have a, a big plate before your food is served on the on the dinner plate so the charger plate is usually a little bit bigger and uh, in this particular case it's going to be called a platter or just a large wooden plate starting with a piece of wood that's just fairly plain like this here i decided this is a piece of white pine when I turned the plate, I left a little beaded edge on, on here. It could have been left alone, it'd be a little more mundane, but I decided to do something a little interesting here and do a rope carving around the perimeter of the plate. What I've done here, it can be done very simply with just basically one tool, and I actually have uh, three different tools here that I used. I'll show you how I got from this edge here, I just left a little portion of it undone, so we'll you get the idea of how this is done, and then we'll wrap it up. So let's get started. Now the thing I like about uh, this particular pattern, it takes a little bit of time to do, get in the rhythm of it. Um, if you wanted to, just with one simple tool, I do find the gouge useful for uh, defining some of the the, the uh, curvature of the of the rope, but it doesn't work in every angle uh, approach to the to the grain. So you can't you couldn't really do this going uphill too well. And you'll find out as you work it, you know what how the wood wants to be cut. It kind of tells you as you work it how you how it wants to be cut. So. That's what I use this, this one here for, it just rounds it over. But the workhorse of this whole thing here is this flex cut. This is just your standard roughing out knife. And these I find really useful. So I'm do, doing this by eye. So I'm kind of, now that I kind of have my space defined here, um, what's left, and I, I would, do a little bit of a definition here. Now I'm gonna, I probably have enough here. I can probably divide this out equally. So I do one here and one here. I need to come back a little bit. This is all visual, of course, so I don't know. I'm just kind of doing it by eye. You can kind of make adjustments as you go. And the angle, I don't know that it matters too much. I, I probably have it at 45. It's not nothing too scientific. There's an old saying that that um, I've heard. I use it quite a bit. If it looks right, it is right. So some people say that doesn't even look right. But you develop your eye, and you can kind of tell if something looks a little out of balance. But even if it if it was a little off, if you look at old folk art pieces, a lot of times they're they're kind of uh, hit and miss. They're they're maybe a little funky that way, or, and that gives them kind of that charm. So I'm a little tighter here, which I don't really care. I'm just going to try and modify it a little bit. So I'm just making a V cut, and I'm kind of a slicing action. I find this kind of a thing really re relaxing. Now the white pine is very, very cooperative wood to work with and you don't have to resharpen your tools quite as often as if you were trying to do this in say oak or something like that because your oak is going to take the edge off and you're not going to be able to um, progress quite as fast. So here I'm just going to get this shaped. 
I measured the circumference of this the, uh, yesterday with a with a uh, like a, a tape that like the kind that uh, tailors use, just a flexible tape measure, and it's 35 inches. This is a like a 12 inch platter. I should have measured it, but so 35 inches, and I figure probably. 15 minutes an inch So it takes a fair amount of time to do one of these if you're gonna do a production of them So here now I turn the plate over If you're gonna try to pro produce like a, a whole set of them it would take you a bit of time but One of the problems with doing production work that's all hand work is you don't want to Necessarily do the uh, a complete one on your first plate because your technique might change by the time you get to the last one. So you leave your first plate a little bit undone and then come back and finish them up so they all look the same, pretty much. So I'm just doing a V. I'm doing a V cut now, and you can see I'm kind of defining, just keeping the the angle the same, and I'm coming back. To an imaginary line here it's probably a quarter of an inch back in there's a big hole there left by a termite or an ant uh, chewed up the wood but I just decided to leave that alone adds a little character to it now here's where I would I would find useful to support this better. It kind of rounds, or yeah, rounds the uh, the profile a little bit instead of being uh, so faceted. And one thing when I'm when I'm done with this, I'm just going to leave the facets there. I'm not going to. Uh, sand it. I'm just going to leave it over time as it gets used it'll kind of come into its own through normal wear and pine is soft enough so it, it'll with repeated scrubbings and wiping off and so forth it's going to kind of come to its own. So this is just a, a simple easy to do design. I, I just what I'm looking for right now is just kind of defining this rope uh, twist. And I can see that some of my, throughout the pattern here, some of them are a little bigger than others. But that's the way it goes. It's not, it's not precision, it's just, it's folksy. And that's what uh, that's what I like, and a lot of people like that. If you had a machine, which they have, you know, devices that would do all this by machine and CNC machining and all that, then it doesn't have that whimsical appeal that I like to see. So I'm coming to the end of my run here. And sometimes you can just you can keep going and and tweak it and do more to it, um, but sometimes you just gotta say you know what, it's I'm done, and I'm almost at that point right now. Of course, I started this some time back and just kind of let it sit. But this is a, this is a, one of those simple things. The only thing you 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 have to have is a lathe or have someone turn the, the blank for you because the to carve all this out with hand tools would be uh, way more time consuming and wouldn't get the results that you want. So I'm just checking, checking now. Um, I would like to have this a little more rounded in some areas. But again, um, it's a little whimsical. It kind of has a nautical feel too, which I kind of like. I've seen 
this done on, on picture frames and of course uh, things that would have a, you know, like a carved knot in it or something like that. I like to get these little whiskers out of here that they're kind of sticking up here and there. And I don't know exactly where I started it, but when I did start, when I did start it, I went both ways. I, I kind of went right and left. But when you do start, you start at, at whatever point you're going to do it and continue on all the way around till they meet. And as you saw that I kind of spaced the last little bit. It might be a little tight there. But um, don't start it here and then do some over here and then come back because they might not match up. But that's about it. Now let's put the the uh, walnut oil on it and see how it looks. Okay, I'm just wiping this off now with with a uh, paper towel and applying my favorite uh, walnut oil finish on here. And I like the walnut oil, as I've said in other videos that I use this on, is that you can keep applying it and it just builds up a nice patina over time. And it dries, which is one of the few oils that dries uh, better than linseed oil. And it's food safe. So that's what's good about it. There's just something that's very satisfying about um, finishing a carving that I've always I've always loved to feel, and to me, I think if you can, you know, in what I call functional art pieces, if you can feel the carving, it kind of adds to the sensation. A lot of times, you you see things in a piece of furniture or a museum or something, you can't touch it. But to me, it just kind of, to be able to touch something that has a, a tactile feel to it is is really satisfying. And I'm gonna do the back side here. This, uh, Pine with this oil gets kind of a yellowish hue, which a golden color, I guess you call it, which I really like. If you wanted it more of a clear finish, then there's a water base, but I don't like to use water base on these kind of things here. So that's it. I'm just wiping it up with some paper towels. I'm going to let time do the final smoothing out of some of the uh, things that, little whiskers and things in there. It's pretty good. I could pick away at it for a long time, but it, I think to leave it like it is, I'm very happy with, uh, very satisfied with, with that look. So th thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Say the end of my rope. And, uh, <laughs> coming to the end of my rope here. <laughs>